Governor, you're joining us today from India. What are you hoping to accomplish with business leaders there? And do we need to know about any new businesses that are coming to Texas? So we're connecting with business leaders as well as government leaders and uh, working on deal after deal after deal. Uh, we've talked to uh, business expansions or new projects in the state of Texas from uh, issues ranging from energy to technology to healthcare. Uh, there actually is a big parallel between businesses in India and businesses in Texas, uh, all seeking economic opportunity. Another thing that the Texans and Americans need to know, and that is the, the rapid growth uh, of the country of India. Uh, there are infrastructure projects across the entire country, uh, highway projects, airport projects. And so you see uh, a first class infrastructure being built that's going to accommodate uh, the growth that India has. The last point is this, uh, and that is uh, what businesses are learning across the globe, and that is they need to look for safe countries in, with which to do trade. And India uh, is the largest democracy. America is the oldest democracy. There's a very natural and very important fit between Texas and India. I got to switch to immigration right now. Congress working on this immigration package and many Republicans, many people feel that Republicans are simply just playing politics with this and that nothing may go through. Isn't it important to try to get something rather than nothing at this point? What's important is for the federal government, so I'm talking about the executive branch uh, as well as the legislative branch, uh, to fix a broken border. Texas is doing everything that we can uh, by building border walls, erecting more than 100 miles of razor wire, uh, having the National Guard deployed constantly, with Texas taxpayers spending more than $10 billion already to secure the border. And what we have is Joe Biden not enforcing the laws already on the books, uh, allowing this outrageous parole of people who've crossed the border, telling them to come back for a court hearing in 10 years, it's outrageous. And so it's essential uh, that both the executive branch and the Congress uh, work effectively to secure our border. So do you think at this point that the Republicans in Congress are doing enough to work with the president on this? And is the president doing enough? So I have no inside information about uh, what members of Congress are hashing out and uh, conversations they may be having with the president. I do know more about uh, what the president's not doing because I've been battling against the president uh, for three years now. And I actually have personally handed a letter to the president in addition to seven other letters I sent to the president uh, seeking for the president simply to step up and enforce the immigration laws already on the books. And repeatedly, he has failed to do so. You know, this week, and you touched on this a little, the Supreme Court sided with the Biden administration. Federal agents can remove this razor wire placed on the Texas border. Will you still continue to put it there, even though the Supreme Court has made that decision? Well, actually, what the Supreme Court did, they, they did not issue a decision with a single word explaining anything. All they did was to return the case to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. What Texas is doing, uh, as has been seen uh, by the video after video after video, uh, is we are adding uh, more razor wire as we speak right now to uh, make sure that we are doing even more to secure the border. Uh, it, we are going to make it uh, impossible to enter Texas illegally. Uh, and that includes uh, maintaining the National Guard on the border, building more border wall, just like what President Trump put up, as well as extending the razor wire wall in the state of Texas. So even after the Supreme Court decision, you will continue to put up the razor wire, even though the decision does clear the way at this point for U.S. Border Patrol to get rid of it. Again, the Supreme Court decision did nothing uh, to uh, write any words saying anything opinion wise. All the Supreme Court did was send a case back to the Fifth Circuit. And after they sent it back to the Fifth Circuit and while this process is taking place, I made very clear what Texas is doing. What I sent out. Uh, in a uh, statement was to make clear, Texas has the constitutional authority to do exactly what we're doing because the authors of the constitution, they knew there would be times when the federal government does not do its job and states have a right of self-defense. And that right of self-defense is established in Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution. And Texas is relying upon the authority written into the Constitution 
for us to be able to secure our border uh, and enact self-defense. I want to talk a little bit about the migrants. By your own estimates, more than 100,000 migrants have been bused or flown to Democratic cities. How long do you plan to continue to do this? And what should these cities expect in terms of migrants coming? And how should they prepare for them? Uh, well, they, they should. Uh, they're, they're dealing with it the same way that Texas is dealing with it. Uh, and that is with uncertainty. Texas doesn't have any information about who's going to be crossing the border. Uh, we don't have no ability to get prepared for it. Uh, and so this is all caused uh, by Joe Biden's refusal to enforce the immigration laws that are already in effect. And as long as there are illegal immigrants crossing our border that Biden is not stopping, Texas, in order to alleviate congestion in small little towns like Del Rio and Eagle Pass, we will continue busing migrants to cities across the entire country. You know, this is something that many people have paid attention to, this busing. And just, you know, how did this idea come to be? Can you sort of get into a little bit of the strategy about how you decided to do this and how the policy all came together? Sure. I was in a meeting on the border with uh, mayors, county judges, uh, police chiefs, sheriffs, et cetera. And, and they were talking about how uh, their community had been overrun, overrun with migrants dropped off by the Border Patrol. They said they couldn't handle it anymore. I said I would help them out uh, by beginning this busing process. And it has alleviated the congestion in small little towns on the border uh, and has spread uh, those migrants across the entire country. And, Governor, before I let you go, and I know we didn't have a lot of time with you, you know, what specific laws can you point to that you say that President Biden is not enforcing? Specific laws. Sure. So uh, he's violating a law that uh, puts people on parole. That when, when somebody crosses the border illegally, uh, they're in violation of the law. Uh, they're required to be detained. And he's not detaining them. Uh, he's giving them parole, mass parole, it does not have any legal validity. Uh, and he's violating federal laws by allowing that mass parole across the entire country. And last question on India, so I can bring it back around. You're there for a few more days. So far, what have you seen that's really stuck out to you there on this trade mission? It's, it's the passion that uh, people in India have to do business with the state of Texas. Uh, there will be a lot of projects that will be announced uh, in the coming days and months uh, that will bear fruit for this trip that we made here. Uh, and Texas continues to have a terrific business relationship with India, uh, and it will mean uh, even more business growth in the great state of Texas.